How did you hear about Islam the first time? How did you feel when you took the shahada? What impressed you the most about Islam? But the most difficult part was my father because my father is, let us say, extremely atheist. So I waited one year to tell my father that I became Muslim. And he was shouting and insulting me. Because of you Muslims there is war. He said, because if you would follow the Bible, you would not do terrorist attacks. You would not do these crazy things like, like you're doing now. So my name is Stan, I come from Belgium, originally from Brussels. I'm now living in Turkey for Erasmus Exchange student because I'm studying law. I'm 23 years old and Alhamdulillah, I'm already six years converted to Islam. How did you feel when you took the Shahada? Alhamdulillah, when you ask this question, I have to think about it again. Do you know when it's in the morning, it's cold outside and there is like still some sun and you do your skin in the sun, but it's cold, but you can feel the heat of the sun, right? because everything is cold, but the sun is like something special and you can feel the heat on your skin. That was like, how was my heart when I took Shahada? And I'm not kidding, this is a true feeling. Wallahi, like I said before, I cannot experience this feeling anymore because it's one of the most purest feelings you have ever felt. It's like something happens with you when you're doing, saying this sentence. How did you feel the first time you prayed the Salah? <laughs> the first time when I prayed the Salah, I was not really aware what I was doing because I didn't have the knowledge why it was so important, why I even would have to perform my prayer. I mean, I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that we have to worship, but I didn't know like the importance of prayer. So when I was doing the first time salah, I, I, it was like doing yoga, you see, I, I was like more relaxing myself. But of course, with the time when I knew why and how everything was fitted, it became more like, uh, you know, something you look forward to because you know it will not only relax yourself but especially it gives a kind of uh, peace that you will not find in anything else, you see. Sometimes I hear people saying in Turkey especially, I smoke a cigarette and I say, why? Abi, Abi, it gives me so much peace. And I think by myself, bro, if you would have praised Salah, this is better than thousands of cigarettes of shishas, you see. But I just don't know. But uh, Alhamdulillah for everything. How did you hear about Islam the first time? It's a really easy answer. I was young and it was 9-11, uh, Twin Towers. Al-Qaeda and Osama Bin Laden, that was like the first two words that I associated with Islam. So that was like the entrance of uh, how Islam came in our lives, in Belgi whole Belgian society. Why did you choose Islam and not other religions? You know, it's not that I chose Islam because converting to Islam, it's a guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, it's a big blessing that I converted to Islam. And especially, um, my story is a little bit unique because I didn't used to believe in anything. I was completely atheist. But the reason why uh, Islam is for me the true religion is, of course, we have something that is called Tawheed, the oneness of God. And the concept about Islam is very clear. That's why the Islam for me is the, the most purest religion because it's the most close to the source of where it came. How did the people around you react after you became a Muslim? How did your family react? That's a little bit uh, funny because my mother, of course, the, the rahma, the mercy of a mother towards her children is so big. I mean, she was the first person I was going to tell it to her. Even already after one day, I told her directly without even any doubts. I said, mom, I have to tell you something. She said, okay, what's wrong? I said, I'm Muslim. And she took it really good because I know my mother, she's a really open-minded woman. She used to live with uh, people from different backgrounds. She used to study in abroad too. So I know she has this kind of a world, uh, worldwide perspective. And she said really softly like, okay, you know, I don't believe in Islam. I don't accept it, but you stay my son and I will always love you, whatever you believe. So 50% of the exam was already done. But the most difficult part was my father because my father is, let us say, extremely atheist not towards Islam only, but all religions in general, he, he really doesn't like it. So I waited one year to tell my father that I became Muslim. Because I knew by myself, if, especially at the time when I converted, you know, it was the uprising of ISIS and the problems in Syria. So I knew he was going to be scared. So one year it took it to me to, to say it to him. And I was like at two o'clock in the morning, we were going to France on vacation. And I remember that moment so good because I was in the front with my father, my sisters and my mother in the back. And I said to him, Dad, I have to tell you something. So he looks at me and says, uh, what, what's wrong with you? Are you gay or something? And I said, no, no, I'm not gay, not at all. That's not a problem. He says, what's wrong then? So I say, you know, Dad, you found a Quran in my, in my room. I found a carpet in my room to pray on. And I used to tell you that these were 
things from my friends, but they belong to me. So he looks again to me and he says, are you Muslim? And I was so afraid to say to him because I, I knew he was going to be shocked and maybe feeling offended. But at the same time, my iman in my heart was so big and I believe so strongly in Islam that I said, you know, whatever would happen, I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his plan is better than my dreams. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you trust upon me and fear me, I will provide you in a way you cannot even imagine. So even if you would throw me out of the house, the car, whatever, the family, I know there was going to be a solution. So I said, look to him in the eyes, I said that I converted to Islam, I'm a Muslim. For 10 seconds, he didn't say anything. After 10 seconds, he started like a volcano that exploded, shouting, insulting, what did you do? How could you be Muslim? We are Belgian people, Flemish people, we are not Muslims, you cannot be Arab. You see, he directly assimilated Muslim and Arab together. And it was funny because he didn't speak to me for a, for a long time. And then my mother, she said something really beautiful. She said to my father, look, you're atheist. And atheist people, they claim that they respect all religions. But if my son converts to a religion, you don't speak to him anymore. So I will not speak with you until you speak again to our son. After five minutes, he was speaking again with my mother. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so that's like the, the most important reaction. Of course, friends. I mean, some took distance, later on they came back because they saw that I didn't change in the fact of I was not going to do crazy things and explosions, but they saw that I changed for the good. So, yeah, first, first they were a little bit, you know, it was awkward, they took some distance to see, but Alhamdulillah, now everything is great and it's like nothing happened, you see, in fact, it even, they appreciate it. So, you know, you have to pray and do fasting and like go to Hajj. And did any of this seem difficult to you? Um, in the beginning, yes, it seems to be difficult because especially as a converted Muslim, and I know a lot of converted brothers and sisters will recognize this problem, you're all alone. Because people, they will guide you to Islam. They will say, I have give a book, I have this, I have something, you know, a good YouTube video. But once you become Muslim, the most people think like, okay, Alhamdulillah is Muslim, he's one of us, it stops. But you know, that's the most critical point because when somebody became Muslim, like we say, what is the most important? Knowledge. You cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without having knowledge. So if there is nobody to give you knowledge, there are two options. Or you have really good people around you and guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will go in a good direction. Or most people, they will go in a bad direction by going to the bad side or by not practicing enough and they will fall down back to where they were used before. So Alhamdulillah, I had, uh, you know, I was not practicing too, so much in the beginning, but Alhamdulillah, I had a good environment around me. and. Uh, Practicing in the beginning was really hard because I always said to myself and people will recognize this problem, inshallah I will do it later. In one week I will pray, in one week I will stop drinking. In one... But we know by ourselves that the trick of shaitan is not to let us make sins. The trick of shaitan is to let us lose time because by time we will lose these things. That's there, by, there is also a surah about the time, wal asr, you see. So I started praying five times a day, for example, on a really childish, childish way. I started praying one week one time, second week two times, third week three times, four week. And after I was praying five times a day, it was like oxygen for my soul. I cannot even now imagine how I would live without praying. Impossible. The same with Ramadan. The first time I did Ramadan, I swear, I was thinking by myself, these Muslims are insane. How do they do this? After one day, I was complaining, where is my fristy? Where is my <laughs> Belgian fries? But Alhamdulillah, if you really understand the concept and your intention is so good, everything becomes easy. Are you more peaceful compared to your old life and why? Oh, definitely. I'm really more peaceful because in Islam we have what we call Qadr. It's like predestined. And Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, it can be that you love something and it is bad for you. And it can be that you hate something and it is good for you. But Allah subhanahu is al alim the most knowing. So whatever happens in our life, we have to know that the plan of Allah subhanahu is better than our dreams. And we have to accept. Everything starts with accepting. Why do we say always Alhamdulillah? Because we have to accept our Qadr, even if it is bad, Alhamdulillah. Even if somebody died, okay, you know, I will be sad, I will be heartbroken, but at the end, Alhamdulillah, something dies, some, somebody borns, you see? That's the way of life, it with all everything. So the fact that I learn how to accept bad and good things in my life, the way how I used to, uh, also the perspective, you treat people so kindly. You have so much respect for more things. It's, it's really different, believe me. How did you pursue Islam before becoming a Muslim? Um, it was not that I was like really racist towards Islam, like now it's happening in the West, or it was not that I was having a bad view about Islam. For me, Islam was something really strange, like 
if I would say to you Hinduism, it's like, okay, you know what Hinduism is, but you will not have a clear concept about it. So I was not that really interested in Islam, and at the same time, I didn't care about it so much as well. It was something that was like far away from it. So I would never have think, you know, just like religion in general, I would have never think that I would start like, believing because I was like really atheist. But did you have like any prejudices? I mean, of course, you watch the media and the Islam is not like the best viewed religion in the world. If we have to say it honestly, we like see daily things about ES, Al-Qaeda, this kind of terrorist organizations. So the little contact that I had with Islam was kind of in a bad way. But at the same time, what also influenced this, I think this influenced me the most why I didn't go directly to Islam because in uh, Belgium, we associate Muslims, especially with like social underclass people. We have just to be objective, like Muslims have a bad reputation. I mean, they are like mostly involved in criminal issues or uh, sometimes they're like really bad viewed by society. I think the most people in Europe stay far away from Islam because they just don't know what Islam is and they don't know what culture is. Why didn't you stay as a Christian and you felt the need to do some research? So uh, when I was like 14, 15 years old, already from a young age actually, I was really interested in the, not believe, but more in the questions, why do we live? What is after that, you see? And when I was 15, 14, 15 years old, because I was studying Latin in high school, I started reading philosophic books about big uh, European philosophers like Immanuel Kant, Kierkegaard, and they influenced me a lot. So I was like a really convinced atheist, of course, also because my parents, they educated me as an atheist. I mean, so that was like, for me, there was no belief, religion was bad. You see these kind of arguments, even in Turkey, you hear it sometimes like, belief is so bad because of belief, people are not educated, we are poor, whatever. And I thought by myself, if I have like the truth, if I'm really correct with atheism, I can convince any other person in the world to become atheist. I went to my school, to my Islamic teacher in my school, and I told him um, about what I wanted to do. I wanted to attend his Islamic classes, but of course not to follow Islam, to debate with people about Islam. And it's funny because after two weeks, he threw me out of the class, you see. So he came to me, he said like, you know, I really like you, you're a good boy, but I, you cannot attend my classes anymore. So I told him, why, what happened? In fact, one of the fathers of the girl called him and he said to the teacher, like, I sent my girl to Islamic classes to attain more knowledge about Islam and she comes home back almost as a kafir because she had so many doubts about the discussions we had. And I was, I felt a little bit arrogant. I had kibber. When you feel like so proud, you think you know everything, you know you are the smartest. So that's a really dangerous thing because when you have kibber, you are like blind for the faults that you make and the people around you. And two weeks after that, I tore my crossbones. And I was so depressed. And what happens when you have like uh, something traumatically or a depression, you want to stay away. Imagine you have a heartbreak. You don't want to do anything anymore. You just want to sit in your room. Nobody has to send you, nobody has to disturb you. Even your own mother irritates you if she comes and asks something. I wanted just to go away for some time. And I went to Bolivia, a country in South America. And Bolivia is one of the poorest countries in South America. And I used to work with orphan children. I did a humanitarian act. And when I was in Bolivia, it was so beautiful because these orphan children, they were maybe five, five, six years old and they were more happy than we were all together in these days now. You know, I was complaining, where is the Wi-Fi? Where is the electricity? Why does my iPad, the iPad doesn't work? And these boys, they were playing with little papers and they were so happy. And it is not that they, because people sometimes say people believe because they don't know further what is going on. But these people also had televisions. They also saw big rappers, famous football players with beautiful women and big cars. So how was this possible? And I asked this to this one of these orphan children and he told me, you know, the answer is so easy. God took my father away, God took my mother away so that I could be only with God. And I was so shocked by what he said, you know, and especially because an orphan, you know, one of the things in life that will touch you the most is an orphan child, because even our Prophet Sarasana was an orphan. And I started thinking because in Belgium, religion is always bad. Muslims are terrorists. Jews are thieves, uh, Christians are pedophiles. And I thought by myself, no, in South America, religion is something really beautiful. Because of religion, people are together. Because of religion, people, they can still live, you know, in a kind of sense. So I started reading the Bible. And I think for six months, I was really dedicated to Catholicism. So I used to go to church, and at Christmas, we believe that it's the birth of Jesus Christ. So you go at midnight, and the priest, he said, dear Christians, we have to be a selfie from God who sent a Jesus Christ, the Son of God, with the Holy Spirit from God in God. So I asked myself, if, who, who is God? You know, because Tawhid, that's the base of our religion. We need to know who is our Creator. So imagine these three are my Creator. Why do I pray to a cross? Why do I pray to Maria? Why do I pray to things I even don't know? 
So I asked this priest this question and he said like, it just, it is, you see, it's in the heart. And that's really, really pity because no, religion is in the heart, but it also has to be in your deeds. We need to be convinced, why are we Muslim? Why do we do some things? Why would we not be Christians like you said? So because the priest, especially what he said, it, it was like all the love for Christianity flew out my heart. And you know, I started being atheist again, drinking, being, doing bad life. And then Ramadan comes. And there was like another boy in my school. So when I asked him these questions, he was like really surprised. He, he started me telling everything in a beautiful story, in the Quran, in the Hadith, he always gives sources. And he invited me three times. And you know, like a little bit like Turkish mentality, I said, yeah, I will come, I will come, inshallah, I will come. But at the end of the day, I, I didn't come. And then the third time he said, look, I really admire your personality, but the fact you give all religions a chance and not Islam hurts me. So I said, you know, I, I will give him a chance. I go to the mosque, take some pictures, then I can say to the Muslims, I have investigated Islam, look, I was in the mosque, whatever, and they will leave me alone. But of course, you can make plans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the best plans. He's the best of planners. So that day I went to the mosque unexpected. And it's funny because the first person I saw was somebody with a long beard, like Arab uh, dressed, and you know, these are the persons, when you see them on television, you, you think directly about ES or bad organizations. So I was thinking to myself, okay, I have to go out or I get killed. But he was so friendly. He was, assalamu alaikum, brother, how are you? Do you want to have tea? Do you want... I said, no, I just want to visit the mosque. Khalas, come, come in, come in, tamam, come in, he said. And I was sitting in the mosque taking some pictures. And a lot of people, you know, in that moment, the, after I took the pictures, the adhan goes off and everybody comes in. So if everybody comes in the building, you cannot go out. It would be so disrespected. And of course, because I already have blonde hair, I'm even more suspicious. And in every mosque, we have a bookstore. And at my right, I saw the Quran, but I never had the Quran in my hands. So when I started reading Quran, just Surah Al-Fatiha, my heart broke. I was crying like a baby. I swear I was crying like a kid. And because this process that I had from atheism to Christianity to Islam, I know Islam was different. This is the truth. And that's the, the way how I became Muslim, Alhamdulillah. So you said there were no logical answers in Christianity. So what kind of logical answers did you get from Islam? Of course, in Christianity, there are similarities that with Christianity and Islam. So once I was in Jordan for, study, for Islamic studies and I was sitting with a big sheikh drinking tea. And when I was going to his library, I saw books about Tawheed, Aqidah, and then I saw the Bible. So I thought by myself, why should a big Islamic scholar have the Bible in his library amongst books, Islamic books? You see, it doesn't make sense. So I go to the Sheikh and I ask him, why do you have the Bible in your library? So he said to me, after the terrorist attacks, there was a, a Syrian man in Jordan, a Christian man, and he came to my house running. He was from the neighborhood and he was shouting and insulting me. Because of you Muslims, there is war, and if you with Muslims would not be here, then there would not be problem. And so he said, to, to what do you refer? Why do you say this? He said, because if you would follow the Bible, you would not do terrorist attacks. You would not do these crazy things like, like you're doing now. First of all, the Sheikh said, calm down. No, I don't calm down. I don't even shake your hand. I'm not coming in. He said, calm down. Let's go. After an amount of time, the man comes in there drinking tea. So the Sheikh says, let's make a deal. I will read your Bible and you will read the Quran. After you have read the Quran, come back to me, I will start reading the Bible and we can have a discussion about, a discussion about it. So he said, okay, he agreed. After four days, the man goes back to the Sheikh and he knocks on his door. So the Sheikh is surprised and he says, why is he knocking on my door after four days? It's impossible that he read the Quran. I mean, it is possible, but it would be strange if he would have read the Quran in four days. And the man, he says to the Sheikh, you know, I feel so bad for insulting you and saying these things about Islam because when I was reading the Quran, if, even in the beginning already in Surah Al-Imran, Surah Maryam, you guys love Jesus more than we do. You speak so much about Jesus in the Quran. Zakaria, Maryam, it's like the whole story is even better mentioned in the Quran. He said, and at the end, the man he even converted to Islam. So the Sheikh said, I even didn't touch the Bible. You see, the man came to, me, to myself. It was almost destined that he came to, to me for searching Islam without even doing something, you see. SubhanAllah. We believe in what was sent by God to Jesus. But we believe in the first Bible, you see, not in the Bibles that are made now because the word of the Bible has been changed. And you can see that clearly in the Bible. For example, when I was reading the Bible, you can see that God is described almost as a human being in the Bible. You know, in the Bible, you will read a lot of times God was creating, God was sleeping, God was resting. And we don't have this concept in Islam because for us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word itself, it's the Almighty, Al-Aziz, the most powerful. So we don't know. We cannot even compare it with something in this world. 
That's the first logical thing because if we would worship something that is like us, it would not have the power like, you know, it would have the same power as we have. So Allah SWT is Al Almighty, that's why we have to worship Him. He can make everything possible. And the second logical thing are just the rules, the akhlaq that we need to have as a Muslim. It's so funny when I see that European countries come to Turkey, for example, and they say, you may not steal, you may not drink. Because we as Muslims used to know this 1,400 years ago already. And subhanAllah, look how time has changed that now we have to become educated by people who are not Muslim with our own Islamic rules. Something to think about. What impressed you the most about Islam? First of all, I would say the brotherhood. There is not any religion like Islam where we have a brotherhood. And you can feel this uh, brotherhood thing like in small things and in hard things. For example, the small things, Assalamu alaikum. You wish blessings upon somebody. And it's a general saying, if you go to Asia, Africa, everybody, every Muslim will recognize another Muslim by saying, Assalamu alaikum. So we have this kind of mercy in between us. You see, when you do something bad, and I know you're, you're a good brother, I will forgive it you more easily. But when somebody outside our community try to attack us, try to mock with us, try to do bad things to us, you see, this happens so much, especially in 2019, everybody is like attacking the Muslims. All over the world we are being attacked, you know, last in Australia, a woman with hijab was attacked. Even in Turkey, sometimes girls with hijab are attacked. But still, we, are, we have this mercy that if somebody is a victim, we take him again in our community and we care, take care for each other. And it's so beautiful. What would you like to say to Christians and atheists? which are watching you right now. Say, first of all, don't be scared to search in another religion. Uh, don't be scared to ask questions. Don't feel too much proud to don't search in other things. Because it's not bad if you don't know it. Even I, before, I was far from the truth and I, I didn't know so much things. But it's especially bad if you don't want to know it. And especially in this world of social media, it's so easy to have some knowledge about religions or people in general, you open your smartphone and you can see what is happening in Turkey, in Arab countries, in, you can watch the, the best scholars in five minutes on your iPhone. These are things that we didn't have before. So it's even easier now to, uh, to search something about Islam and especially don't believe the media always. Because I was watching the media too before and if I would have followed the media, I think I would not have been here in Turkey, Be not maybe only as a Muslim, but just as a human. The media makes uh, people uh, dividing each other. There is like a huge polarization towards each other. And we, even Christians, Muslims, Jews, whatever you come from, wherever you will be, wherever you will go, we used to be like this, you see. I would say search for it and don't be afraid of, uh, of Islam because it will change your life in a very good way, believe me. That was amazing. I'm really happy to meet you.